The Milk River, the lifeline of the High Line. This river runs from the mountains near Glacier National Park to the prairies of eastern Montana. The milk is unique in that the majority of its surface flow is supplemented by another river. In 1912, the federal government began construction of the St. Mary Diversion and Conveyance System. This diversion structure diverts water from the St. Mary River by way of a concrete dam. The water then flows down 15 miles of canal through a pair of 90-inch steel siphons that are each 3,600 feet long. As the water travels through more miles of canal, it runs through a second siphon, crossing Halls Coulee. The water flows through miles of canals and five drop structures before entering the North Fork of the Milk River. My role with the Milk River is really unique. It's uh, kind of historic in the fact that my granddad came back over here back in 1908 and settled here when the dam project was first started. I'm a landowner and, and we irrigate out of the Milk River. Uh, we came and we formed a little group called the Milk River Watershed Alliance. And uh, through the course of events, I became the chairman, and that's my involvement with the Milk River as we speak right now. Now, the water that you see here on this river, over 90% of this came through two eight foot siphon tubes up at St. Mary's. And that was part of the diversion to drop it down and to move the water through canal system, through tubes. If you look at our concrete here, this is a hundred year old structure. Uh, that's where our problem is at. It's not a matter of if, but when this structure fails. It's a very unique infrastructure. It begins over in Glacier at Bab and the St. Mary's project uh, flows from there. And, and uh, some of the forefathers that looked at the whole thing, they had some engineers that came up there and they took a look at it and decided that uh, we could feasibly co-join the uh, St. Mary's and the diversion up there into the Milk River and put the two of them in there. Well, the uniqueness thing about the Milk River that a lot of people don't realize, it's, it's an international river. It starts in Montana over in Bab, flows up into Canada for about 300 and some river miles, and they have all kinds of diversions up there, and, and they are just really doing a top-notch job with uh, irrigation projects and stuff in Canada as we speak. Then it comes back down into Montana over by Fresno, north of Haver there. And uh, then it comes down and then through the different channels and the Dotson Diversion Dam and the Vandalia Dam and uh, about 525 miles till it hits the confluence over here on the Missouri River. And uh, that's where it ends up dumping in uh, just below Fort Peck Dam over there. So it's really a, an interesting long river internationally. This magnificent system provides irrigation on 110,000 acres of farmland and drinking water for approximately 13,000 people in Haver, Chinook, and Harlem. Without this diversion, the Milk River as we know it today would run dry in six of every 10 years. Irrigators currently shoulder 75% of the diversion's operating cost. The federal government covers just 25%, a ratio which is unsustainable for ag producers. So the Milk River has great significance since it originates here on the Blackfeet Reservation. And so when we think about uh, um, management of the Milk River or management of water resources as a whole, um, the management concepts that we implement here at the headwaters certainly have great, uh, great impact for all users downstream. So when you think about the opportunities about the replacement of that system and the upgrading of the, the, the viaduct that takes the water to the Milk River, um, we lose about 200,000 acre feet a year. And so that's enough, that's enough water to irrigate Valley County, right? That's enough water to irrigate, you know, one of the uh, Warner County, right, in, in Alberta. And so when you think about all the municipalities along the Milk River that rely on the milk for drinking water, not just irrigation, but for human consumption, it would have a detrimental impact. And so it underscores the importance and the need that we get the uh, diversion and the upgrade to the system underwritten. You know, the Milk River um, uh, supports uh, life, you know, it supports biodiversity, it supports agriculture, it supports livelihood. You know, not just for Montanans, not just for tribal people, not just for Canadians, but for everyone along the milk.
We're probably about seven miles from the international boundary. This is Riding on Stone Provincial Park. I don't think people realize where the water comes from and you know what how the diversion works and and the condition that it's in and the age that it is it'd have a pretty big impact on the town they get the water directly from the river and then there's a line that goes from the milk river treatment uh, plant down to coots which then goes to sweetgrass so it would affect all three of those communities significantly if if the system failed what's important for both both our economies, um, and and it's it, it's one system, and it probably should be treated that way as much as possible. Starting in September till the first of December, the motels are filling up, the restaurants. It's uh, and it all comes back to the Milk River, the wildlife, and uh, everything that's associated with it. My folks bought my place in 19, April of 1966 and uh, we're, I'm right on the Milk River. I would be out of business. I'm 100% irrigation. Any irrigation in the Milk River was to be done away with your city of Haver, your city of Chinook, Harlem, they would be out of water. Fresno, the fisheries that it's became, it's still an irrigation reservoir. Nelson Reservoir, which you'll see, is a big fisheries reservoir now. Them would be non-existent. We also have a wildlife refuge that we deliver water to at Bowdoin National Wildlife Refuge. Each year, I think it would be non-existent. Um, it, it, it would be, you might as well take and tear off the top end of the High Line of Montana. The Milk River right now provides all the water for the city of Haver. So the city of Haver is a population of around 10,000. Um, we do have water that we supply out into the county in some areas. We have some watersheds that they can get water from. Um, and uh, Hill County is about 17,000 people. But you, we, would not, we would not have any water in the city of Haver right now if, if the Milk River was not running um, from what we have from the St. Mary's River. Our business is the, the oldest business in the High Line, uh, oldest business in northern Montana. The um, company was founded in 1904 to do what we do now, laundry. Uh, I would say that probably about 97, 98 percent of the water we do comes from the Milk River base. And um, without the Milk River, um, the city of Haver would have to cut back on the amount of usage they have. The wells just wouldn't sustain the water usage within this community. The Milk River is, is critical to us. It's, it's our life. It's our livelihood. Um, without water, a laundry simply doesn't exist. Everybody that's employed here could potentially lose their job. I'm the fourth generation cattle rancher. Uh, we actually started in 1885 and we've been ranching ever since somewhere, somewhere along the southern part of the province and along the Milk River. The significance of the Milk River is uh, it's almost uncalculable. Uh, we use the river for the cattle, we use the river for uh, the aquifer that it supplies the water to for drinking water. I think the biggest misunderstanding about the Milk River is that it's a natural river. It has been altered uh, after the, the Boundary Waters Treaty of 1909. And if you go back to my great-grandfather's time, actually that was ahead of when the diversion happened, so he would have seen the river a whole lot different. If the St. Mary's diversion was to fail, I think eventually the town of Milk River would probably go away. The Milk River is critical to the High Line of Montana. Um, it flows for hundreds of miles uh, once it re-enters Montana at the Eastern Crossing. Um, that flow of the Milk River um, provides habitat, recreation for fish and wildlife all the way across the High Line. Um, 
In fact, the 2006 study by Dr. Duffield out of University of Montana indicated that the economic benefits of the Milk River it's, it, on some years can rival that of agriculture. And so it's hugely important from an economic perspective. The milk and Missouri system here arguably are the most aquatically diverse ecosystem in the state of Montana, providing uh, habitat for about 40 species, most of which are native. Um, so this is critical um, to many native species, including sauger, catfish, burbot, shovel-nosed sturgeon, pallid sturgeon, catfish, and, and a host of native minnows. Uh, the Milk River mitigates many of those impacts that Fort Peck Dam has on this big river. The Milk River is an underutilized resource for recreation. Sportsmen rely on the Milk River for fishing, hunting, boating, and water sports. Events like the annual Milk River Catfish Classic bring more than 160 fishermen to the Glasgow area. If the diversion fails, the river will dry up and the fish will be gone. Vice President of the Montana Catfish Association, Brenner Flayton, says, without the milk, life here won't be the same. I don't think people really realize the importance here or what could possibly be gone. We can't let the sun go down like it is now on this project because there might not be another tomorrow. That's the reality of this whole St. Mary's project that we're trying to work out. And I think that's what the Milk River Watershed Alliance is really working hard, trying to make not only a sustainable change for the watershed, but to preserve, protect, and enhance this livelihood that we have here. But without the water, I'm sorry, it's nighttime. The St. Mary diversion system must be modernized to ensure the Milk River continues to flow. The cost of replacing the St. Mary diversion dam, siphons, and drop structures will be considerable, as much as $200 million. But the cost of not replacing them will be devastating, an estimated $2 billion lost to the local economy. We need your help in voicing the importance of repairing this system. Contact your local officials, as well as state senators and representatives, and ask that the diversion system be made a priority. Get involved now. Visit MilkRiverWatershedAlliance.com for more information.